I hope everyone is having a good day. I know in the Philippines it's uh, 10 a.m. Hello. Yes, I know in the Philippines it's 10 a.m. So I hope you guys are having a great morning and a great start to the day. As I said, it's nighttime here, so it's 10 p.m. And I finished my day. I didn't have too much going on. I went to the gym. I usually go to the gym. So I only really went to the gym today and I ran some errands. So I didn't have much to do. It was pretty relaxed. And I needed a relaxing day since um, I just came from the city. So I was running around a bit for work. And I'm going to go back up to the city soon. Um, currently, I'm in my hometown of Pennsylvania, but I'm based in New York City, which I just arrived from yesterday. So I'll be going back up to the city Wednesday, and we'll stay there through the weekend. And then next week, we'll be doing some more Miss Earth filming. So I'll be with my half of my team again. So I'm really excited for that. So I see we have a few more people on. So thank you guys so much for joining us. Hi, Ronald. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Who do you look forward to in the competition? Who, Harley, um, could you rephrase that? Who do I look forward to meeting in the competition? Or what part of the competition do I look forward to? Hi, Raleigh. But over overall, I'm very excited to just participate since I am new to pageantry, so and being virtual, there are so many new elements to this. So I'm not really getting to experience the typical pageant journey, you could say. So I'm looking forward to just participating and kind of really establishing a bond with the other contestants as well, virtually. And that's a challenge, but we are all doing it as we're all part of a group chat and we're encouraging each other, supporting each other. Hi, we love you, Miss USA. Thank you so much. But yeah, I'm so glad you guys could join me. I'm very excited to be doing this live. I know we don't have an interviewer and I was completely fine with that. I was like, let's do this. I'm new to Facebook Lives as well. So I get a little nervous. Last time I did a live, I had no idea I was already live. So I'm just kind of staring blankly and I'm not talking and I have no idea what's going on and I completely missed all of the comments so I had no idea anyone was even watching so I was just kind of like doing my own thing but I would love to answer any questions you guys have and talk about whatever you want to talk about tonight is super relaxed and easy I can go over my advocacy as well and Really, we can just have fun too. So I'd be looking forward to having easy, nice conversations. I've been doing a lot of interviews, so we've been talking a lot. And if you guys have followed me, um, I talk a lot, so I do enjoy talking. <laughs> so it works for me. But hi, everyone. You keep uh, People keep coming in. Hello, Norman. Nelson, thank you so much. Did you get appointed or did you? Yes, we, we had a national competition, so I did not get appointed. I competed for this title and we had a virtual competition. So that was interesting. We were going to have a regular competition and then the pageant kept getting pushed back due to COVID. And then eventually Miss Earth USA, the team was just like, we're gonna have a virtual competition. Let's try and do this to the best of our ability and see where it goes. So I did compete for this title. If you do not know, the title I had prior was Miss Atlantic Ocean. So I was representing the Atlantic Ocean at Miss Earth USA and that title was appointed. So then I ended up earning the Miss Earth USA title, which is why it's so special to me. Please shout out. Hi, Leo. Leo, okay, I love the name Leo. I've always been a fan of the name Leo, so I love that your name is Leo. And of course, Leonardo, I don't know if it's short for Leonardo, but Leo, I've just always, I have one of my friends, his name is Leo. Just love that name. I just think it's such a cute name. Nelson, what advocacy will you bring to Miss Earth? So my advocacy is the water crisis. When it comes to climate issues that we are facing, we have four main issues that are most pressing. That would be global warming, pollution, biodiversity loss, and the water crisis. 
So that is why I chose to advocate for the water crisis because it is one of the most immediate risks that threaten us because it threatens humanity and it also threatens regional stability. A lot of people do not know the effects of the water crisis and how imperative it is to address it. So that is why I'm bringing the water crisis to attention. How do you define the new normal beauty queen? How important is it in nation building at this time of pandemic? The new normal beauty queen. So again, I'm brand new to the pageant industry. So my typical views of pageantry were stereotypical, really, because I didn't know anything about it. So what I would say just from my recent experiences and what I have learned, beauty queens now, I feel like we have such a great opportunity to reach more people and influence more people, especially because everyone is online right now. So if we have queens that are very proactive and responsive when it comes to social media platforms, we will have a leg up in the situation because we will be able to know how to address our audience, how to search for our audience and just how to reach them. So I feel for a new normal for a beauty queen, would just to be very proactive when it comes to social media platforms. And especially in a time where things are very sedentary, where we can't really do much, we can't really go out and travel and see things. We have to find new fun and encouraging ways to be proactive and encourage our community to be proactive as well. So I feel that would be the new normal. And how important it is a nation building at this time of the pandemic. I. I believe this is very important because again, as everyone is online right now, we have the opportunity to reach such a large audience and we need to take advantage of that. So if you know how to present yourself, if you know how to speak and you know how to engage in a public audience, we, we can go very far with this. So I think it is very important, especially at this time. I do talk a lot, Jamina. Yes, I talk so much and sometimes I don't know when to quit and it gets very embarrassing, but I don't realize until afterwards, I talk a lot. I think that somebody made a joke. Um, I was doing an interview and I just kept talking and talking and somebody commented, um, not Miss Earth USA, more like Miss Earth Talkative. And I was like, that's me, that's hands down me. Is it more challenging to compete in a pageant and miss the pandemic? Honestly, I don't know since I don't really have much to compare it to. I will say it has its pros and cons. A lot more pros for the contestants because we get to take as many shots as we want during filming. So it's not like we're going on stage and we're risking tripping or risking a wardrobe malfunction, which I've had, I model full time. So I've had wardrobe malfunctions before and I've tripped plenty of time, plenty of times. But um, dur during this pandemic for a virtual pageant, we can take as many shots as we want and we have no excuse to submit anything less than perfection because we have an unlimited time to submit this. Not unlimited time, the pageant final is uh, November 29th, but we have unlimited takes to submit it. Kat Katerina Spirit in me, <laughs> thank you. I did learn who Kater Kater Katerina Katerana was because I've been hearing her a lot lately, so I ended up looking her up and uh, getting some information and research on her. So I appreciate that. I really I really do like um, Katerina. So I think she's, she's great, and I can see why a lot of people like her. So thank you. What do I do to promote my advocacy? I volunteer a lot, and I volunteer in a lot of different communities and a lot of different with a lot of different organizations. Um, I love the Humane Society and just um, Pittsburgh Partnership where we go around and we do focus on litter um, around the city and planting trees, but specifically to my advocacy, I really enjoy volunteering with Allegheny Cleanways where we do river cleanups. So we focus a lot on the water pollution since my advocacy is the water crisis and pollution in the waterways is a tremendous health hazard, not just for humanity, but for the aquatic species and the aquatic ecosystems. And a lot of people don't understand the severity of polluting our waters because the water 
Water pollution, it doesn't end with our waters. So from our water, what happens? It evaporates and it goes into the clouds. And then what happens? Then it turns into rain. And then it goes into our soil and our soils where we grow our crops. So all of those chemicals and toxic pollutants are now in our foods. It's a complete life cycle. So that's what I'm really trying to bring to attention. What do you think are the demerits of doing the pageant virtually? Well, I feel a lot of people really shine when they get to interact one-on-one -on -one and like physically in person. You can really tell a lot about a person by just having them walk into a room and feeling their energy. I'm a high energy person, so I feel like I can come across high energy virtually as well. But a lot of, t a lot of times people don't really have that, that confidence to portray themselves the same way online via in person. So I feel whenever you don't know how to present yourself virtually, that's going to be um, an issue. So we really have to focus on how we can be lively and entertaining through a virtual platform. But thank you guys so much for joining in. I appreciate this. I was waiting. I was so excited. I got home early evening and I was just kind of waiting and I was just watching. I was binge watching Netflix and Hulu, just waiting for 10 p.m. to roll around. But uh, Jade, how does pandemic affect the lives of the people? What do you think the best solution of this Oof, solution? Um, so the pandemic effect affects everyone. Every single life on earth has been altered to some extent. Everyone has felt an effect, whether it be through being furloughed out of work, losing their jobs completely, um, losing their, their home, their shelter because they can't afford rent, losing uh, the ability to feed themselves and their family, losing the ability to just interact with another person because as humans, we really focus on the sense of touch and the sense of togetherness. So a lot of mental health has been declining because of this pandemic. So a lot of people have been affected by this. And the best solution is honestly to just ad adhere to safety guidelines and to be responsible. You can still live your life, but responsibly. You can still have a good quality of life. Just keep others in mind. If you're around someone that is high risk, please act accordingly. And don't go out. Don't um, subject yourself to questionable situations where you can possibly contract something. Even though you can be asymptomatic, you have no you have no way of knowing whether you're going to pass on or spread this disease. So the solution is to honestly listen to your officials, listen to your body. If you feel unwell, please follow the guidelines that are given to us. But I do believe that we we will, we will get through this stronger than ever for sure because we are all learning a lot, not just as individuals, but as communities and as um, governmental agencies as well. So I do believe there will be positive effects from this. We just have to take our time, wait it out, and see what happens and learn from it. So any situation where you learn from will wreak a positive benefit. How did this pandemic change my life and what's the most important lesson I've learned? So this pandemic, I'm a loner. I am a lone wolf. I love being alone. I also love to go out with my friends, but again, I just appreciate my alone time. So I had noticed how much, how important it is for me to be around my friends and my family and just to be around people that I can talk to and can support me. So I didn't realize how I thought being by myself, I would be okay, to be honest. And I was at first, but then towards the middle of the pandemic, during middle of quarantine, I started to get into a very difficult place mentally and physically. I neglected my physical health. I neglected my mental health. I thought I was okay, but I really wasn't. So it really taught me how to be in tune with myself, how to take my emotions and really analyze them and understand where they're coming from. Because a lot of people do not understand what is their trigger and wh why they are feeling that way. So that has that is what I've been able to learn is to really analyze my emotions and kind of figure out where those are coming from, what has triggered that. So that is what I have learned. And it's changed my life where I've taken 
I've taken things for granted where just being able to go out and say hi to a friend, I thought, I didn't really think anything of it, but that is a privilege. That's a privilege to be able to go out and interact with people when our bodily functions as humans, we need that touch. We need that interaction with people, but you don't really think about, think about it that much because on a daily basis, you have that interaction, but once it's taken from you, that's whenever you realize that is actually a very vital and important role in my life. And I hope you guys are doing well with this. I hope you're able to interact and um, speak to your support system about any emotions you're feeling, any questions that you have, just because now's the time we are, we have to be alone, but we don't have to be alone mentally. We can always support each other from a distance. Mostly parts of the USA now is burned by fire, mostly some parts in Oregon and California. By this time of pandemic, how could you use your platform to reach people? Um, but yes, the wildfires going on in the US have been awful. And a lot of that is in part to climate change. And we're going to have more frequent wildfires if we don't actually step up and do something. And a lot of changes in precipitation cycles and the decrease in frequency of winds will increase the amount of wildfires. I, I have a lot of friends out west and family as well. They've been doing the best that they can. The air quality is very poor, so they are mostly indoors to prevent any um, toxicity in the air to be inhaled. So they're, they're struggling, and it is nice that we're having this attention on them because they are getting the attention that they deserve. They need to, everyone in the world needs to know what the West Coast is going through. So I appreciate through social media, everyone is sharing this. And to use my platform, I'm just using my platform to educate and to make people aware and to try and influence, even if it's just one person, I would consider that a, consider that a success. So on my Eco Angel USA 2020 Instagram, I have on my highlights, I have like eco education where I'll share like random facts that I find even fun and interesting that kind of keep people engaged on my account. I also have the water crisis, which is my advocacy. I have biodiversity loss, which is I'm also passionate about. So I honestly just share facts about climate change, how you can um, have small behavior modifications to help climate change in your community, as well as just your day to day life as well. And that's my goal really is just to reach as many people I can. And so that's why I'm so blessed with Miss Earth USA title where I am now able to reach such a broader audience and be able to speak to people I wouldn't have had that chance to. So Gemina, what do you prefer a virtual or an actual competition? Honestly, I don't know. So I've only really been in one like physical competition. And that was the first time ever, which was in November 2019. And then Miss Earth USA was my second pageant ever and it was virtual. So I feel I feel I definitely would prefer an actual pageant because it is more communal and you get to interact more. And honestly, I'm a people person, so I just love engaging with people and especially judges as well. Whenever you have your panel interview, I love it. Like I thrive off the energy and just meeting everyone. And so doing a virtual one, I'm just doing what I am now where I'm just kind of sitting behind a screen and looking at myself the whole time, which is weird. So I definitely prefer in person. But the benefits though of the virtual pageant like no wardrobe malfunctions. I'm not going to trip anywhere. So those are, there are benefits. What harsh truths, oh, I clicked on it. What harsh truths do you prefer to ignore about myself or in general? Um, Harley, if you want to be a little more specific on that and I will answer that. Um, Jefferson, have you met any of the representatives in this year's pageant? How do you find them? In the Miss Earth pageant, I have not met anyone yet, well, physically, if that's what you meant, um, but virtually, we are all a part of a group chat, so we've been able to just speak to each other, like, through text message. I haven't really gotten to know anyone on, like, a really personal, individual level, since it is such a group chat, but they're, everyone honestly seems so nice and friendly, and 
there's a lot of girls that are really being proactive and taking initiative to try and create a bond. So I really appreciate that. And especially since I am new to this, I don't really know what I'm doing. So having these girls there are very, it's very, it's very nice and very supportive. Leo asks if you will be given a chance to talk to the president in your country about what's happening in the world right now, what would you ask him and why? And suggest some things on what should you do during this pandemic we're facing right now. If I could speak to my president, I would, what's going on in the world right now, obviously we do have this pandemic that they're facing, but I am honestly proud of my government and I'm proud of um, the other countries as well for handling this and really getting a grasp on this. So I would focus on the environment at the state and I would show them that if you look at the research and the studies that have been done, that we've made significant progress by staying indoors and uh, not using as many uh, cars, transportation, fossil fuels, we've been able to drastically reduce our emissions. So by pointing that out, we would be able to show them that the issue with the world today is us like we are the ones doing this so there's no it's, there's no it's pretty black and white there's no rebuttal on that we are the cause of this so i would point that out and i would tell him that this is a very serious situation that some people aren't taking into account because just as with the withdrawal of the paris agreement we need to be able to do everything that we can in this day and age to try and combat this climate crisis because we are on a timeline and this timeline has a deadline that we have to meet so if we are one degree away from that tipping point that is going to cause more frequent catastrophic flooding it is going to cause droughts famine heat waves a decrease in our already limited water supply entire ecosystems will collapse and Believe it or not, a third of all life on Earth will face extinction. So if I were able if I were able to speak to our president, I would be able to tell him all of these facts that cannot be ignored because facts are indisputable. So if we were able to bring that to attention to our government officials and really show them the facts, that's what I would like to do. But there, there's a lot of issues that we are <laughs> facing today and a lot of environmental issues. There are so many, and we really have to start from like the top down, the most in which I feel is the most um, immediate risk is the water crisis. So that is why I chose it as my advocacy. Oh, and Linnell um, gave me a hashtag plant poaching. So there has been so much deforestation. And if you've known this from the beginning of human civilization, we are down by 46% from the beginning of humanity. That is a tremendous decrease in our flora. So about 15 billion trees a year are lost due to deforestation. So that is what I can tell you about plant poaching. There's been such an upset with the amount of flora that has been disappearing from our actions. And one of the things that we have to do and focus on is our actions because it's very easy to reach our goals by using sustainable practice. So we can come out on a win-win situation. It's just, we have to be mindful and we have to be eco-conscious and friendly. And it's not that difficult. A lot of people have the impression that I need this and I need this now the cheapest way. However, everyone thinks in short term, no one thinks the long term. So if you actually thought in the long-term process, your cheap way might be cheap now, but down the road, it's actually going to cost you more money. But if you think long term, it actually saves you money. So it's very interesting that our government officials do not really think in our long term prospect because that is actually what will save us money in the long run because a lot of governments are um, have issues surrounding funding. So that is like the main culprit with a lot of things. I think it's Mel, M-H-E-L, Mel. He asks... Or she asks, um, I think it's time for the U.S. to claim Alpha Crown. Thank you so much. I just learned that America has never taken home the Miss Earth Crown. That is crazy to me. That is such a lot of pressure. But that would be great to see if I could do that. I would love that. Um, what makes me stand out? Oh, beautiful and articulate. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. What makes me stand out, honestly, I mean, maybe because I'm so new, I may be a breath of fresh air. That's what people have told me. I honestly am just going with the flow. I'm doing what kind of like comes to mind. I'm not really rehearsed or coached or 
anything like that. So I think that's probably what makes me stand out is I'm just kind of like a little bit more fresh, not, not so coached. Um, I've heard relatable and honest. So I appreciate those terms as well. So I'm thinking that's going to play as um, play a good part on my behalf. Oh, Leo, you're welcome. <laughs> what is the biggest challenge young people face today? Well, JB, I feel a lot of issues stepping outside of the environmental sector. A lot of issues with young people, I believe, are equality, which is also with older generations as well, but also with gender identity is a big one with a lot of the trans community and um, the pride community. I feel that's a major issue today, especially with our older generations not being able to really understand where the younger generations are coming from because they've grown, they grew up in such a different generation. Um, I also feel action is a mild issue, not as much as, it's not as significant. I feel a lot of younger generations don't really know where to start. They have a lot of heart, as we've seen with Black, the Black Live, Lives movement, where they've been able to take to the streets and really protest, really use their freedom of speech and their right to protest. So we have action on that point. It's just about focusing all that action that they're putting for, for, um, forward for a Black Lives movement into their everyday life, into other issues as well. So we have that focus. We just need to be able to steer it and push it into other issues as well. So I'm so grateful and proud of my generation and the generation beneath me with the Black Lives Movement. And that just sparked my, my passion because that's what makes me want to reach out to these younger generation. This younger generation is because I see how motivated they are. So if we can just make everyone else aware about the environmental crisis that we're facing, that people will be able to take that passion as well and kind of go with it and just fuel themselves. How does it feel to be a pandemic beauty queen? I honestly, I don't know. So sometimes I feel like this isn't happening, but it is. So I kind of, I didn't, I didn't really, it didn't really sink in until I was taking, um, I was having my shoot with my crown and my sash. And then after wearing that and like taking those photos, it really sank in that I actually won this title. And yes, I was a beauty queen. So that was kind of really crazy to feel. But um, overall, it feels, it's, it's a good feeling. And I honestly feel like I have so much more to my life now. And I have just a more fulfilling and purposeful life. So that's what I'm really taking away from it. And it's encouraging me to take more action and to just better myself, better my community, get my words out there and just have people hear what I'm trying to say. So it feels honestly amazing. And it, I feel kind of unstoppable in a sense. Hi, Jalal. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. What is your advice to people who are suffering mental issues during this pandemic? Again, I don't know if you caught the beginning um, when I said I, ha I significantly, my mental health declined significantly during this pandemic. So I do, I speak a lot to my friends. I have a therapist that I speak to as well, and she's my rock. So I'm able to talk to her about a lot of things that, and a lot of emotions that I'm feeling. But it is so important to open up and just to analyze your feelings, understand your triggers and what they're coming from. Be outside, be in nature, even though you can't surround yourself with a lot of, lot of people, surround yourself with things that you enjoy and that you look forward to and what you just enjoy doing. So being outside is one of my muses. So with someone that's facing issues today, I really feel like talking about your issue issues and your emotions will really help put them in perspective with yourself. And you're able to, once you say them out loud, you're able to kind of really understand and analyze it to find out, oh, why am I actually feeling this way? So being able to address your own feelings, talk about them, do something active, keep your mind open, your body just moving honestly eat healthy, work out if you can, um, d develop a new hobby even. I've tried to do that as well. Um, even take up some of my old hobbies that I go off and on with. But if you just keep yourself busy and really, really focus on how you're feeling and 
understand your emotions. And honestly, I recommend um, speaking to someone. I always, always recommend a therapist or some type of individual that you can confide in because a lot of people used to think that was taboo in our older generations. But what I also love with our younger generation is that it is not taboo. It's very normal and it's brave and it's courageous to actually be able to open up and speak to someone about that. But the most important thing is to talk about it. That is my best advice. Brooke, thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate that. And why should I win Miss Earth? I believe every candidate is a great candidate for, for Miss Earth. Personally, I honestly feel I would have the best run at Miss Earth because as an American, I understand and I travel a lot, so I've been able to see a lot of different different countries and different cultures as well. And as, as a traveler and as an American, I'm able to understand and put myself before my country. So I put myself at the world's feet, not just my country. And knowing that all our countries have to work together because we share this planet, I understand what it means to be a leader, how to lead and how to influence. And whenever we can really target our communities and share with them that we have to be more than our country in order to fight this climate crisis, that is whenever we are able to be united and take a front and take a stance on this and act. So as Miss Earth, I would be able to just act for our world, not just as an American, not just in my community, but with all of the people that I have met throughout this world, with all of my travels, I understand what it's like to live in Africa. I understand what it's like to live in Europe, what it's like, like to live in South America and Puerto Rico. I understand what it's like to live in Canada. I've honestly, in Australia, I have been all over this world. I have seen every culture. I've spoken to so many different people. I know the struggles. I know the benefits. I know the positives and the negatives. I know what it means to be Miss Earth. And I really know how to emphasize our struggles, not just in America, but worldwide. And since I know the connection between all of the countries, and I know my country, we have taken some steps backwards when it comes to fighting the environmental crisis. I know that we have to work together in order to do this. So as an American, being uh, earning the title of Miss Earth, I would be able to speak not just for the world, but to my country and show them that our actions are affecting the world and that we need to make a change and that we need to make a stance in order to work together. So especially with our current administration and our future election coming up, it is very imperative to have a strong, influential voice as Miss Earth that understands what it means to be not just a community, but to be a world citizen. I talked, I, I spoke a little bit too much on that. See, I'm very talkative. <laughs> I just get, I get too, too crazy. Harley, what should be the goal of humanity? The goal of humanity, it's to be human. Like that is, that is the goal. A lot of people get lost in their own lives, in their own government, in their own country. We are all humans. We all share this planet. We all have lives and we all have emotions and feelings. We just need to remember that. We need to be compassionate. We need to ha show empathy. So our goal as humanity is to be human because a lot of times we just kind of misplace our, our emotions and our priorities throughout our own lives. Oh, I like these little emojis, the cat hugging a coffee. That's so cute. So my last name's coffee, like C-O-F-F-E-Y, not E-E. -E. But um. So that's cute. I just like that. But I'm not a coffee drinker. So I wish um, I was because since my last name is coffee, I feel like I'm doing a disservice to my family. Gab Gabrielle, I see you asked the Miss Earth title as well. I hope I was able to ans answer that for you since I just answered Harley's. Uh, or I'm so sorry, since I just answered Brooks. Um... And Leo, you asked the same question for Miss Earth. <laughs> um, oh, well, another hashtag from uh, Linnell, Green Recovery. Honestly, it's just about stimulating the economy as well. 
with a green initiative, green in mind, the whole point of being eco-friendly is going green. So if we can kind of stimulate our economy, our local economy, our worldwide economy and think green, that is what I think about green recovery. How are the conditions of con traditional markets during this pandemic in your area? So in the US, whenever this first happened, the stock market crashed. I'm not sure if you've heard of that. But then again, the, um, what is it? S&P 500 index actually kind of went up 20 points just a month ago. No idea how that happened, but it did. So the economy is not as bad as it was projected to be. We are struggling worldwide. We are struggling, but it is, we are not in a recession. So we are taking steps into, in order to avoid that recession. You guys have some great questions. I was not, I didn't know what to expect. So these are some great que questions. Um, Mary uh, from Trinidad. So the pandemic is, yes, out of control. I'm so sorry that you guys are struggling. I am hoping that you have a support system and a way to cope with this. I hope that you have a strong family system and that you're able to keep your mind preoccupied, but also always stay aware, stay in tune, but don't focus too much on it. That was my downfall whenever this first started. Every single day I was reading articles, I was listening to the news, I was trying to learn everything I could about this. And it was interfering with my mental health so much because it was so negative and there was so much going on that was out of my control and I had I, I could not do anything. So please, Mary, don't overwhelm yourself. Everyone, we're doing the best that we can. Just act, responsib act responsibly, um, have your support system. Honestly, just keep talking to your family and your friends and just be be safe. I'm so sorry to hear that you guys are struggling my heart honestly goes out to you guys. I hope you're being safe though. Gabriel, my thoughts about the green thumb and is it advisable today? Well, it's always advisable. <laughs> so having a green thumb is so important because a lot of a lot of people this day and age, they don't really get caught up in eco-friendly choices. And a lot of the times it's because it could be overwhelming because a lot of the times on the internet, you'll see people pushing for zero waste lifestyle. That is very intimidating. It's intimidating for me and it's overwhelming. So in order to push for a green thumb and to get the word out there, it's to be able to introduce small scale behavior modifications that do not affect your day-to-day -day lifestyle. So it completely is advisable. You just have to understand your audience, who you're talking to, and how to approach the situation where it's not intimidating, it's not overwhelming. But everyone, a green thumb is always recommended. There is never a time where it shouldn't be. And especially during a pandemic, whenever we have food scarcity, if you have a green thumb, you can go out there and in your garden, make your own fruits and vegetables. You know where it comes from. You know that you're not using pesticides. You know exactly what's going into your food source. So honestly, a green thumb can save your life. Oh, Ave, Ave, Avi, A, yes. Um, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Hello from the Philippines. Thank you. Um, God bless you. Hello, City. Uh, City, I love that name. That's so unique. Ooh, this is interesting. Christian, how can you explain the environment to a blind child? So I've actually looked into this, not necessarily related to that question, but I was watching this segment on how children would tell a blind person how they would describe color to them. And coming from a child, of course, the answer's a little bit silly. So when they wanted to describe the color green, a kid would say like a plant. But of course, the blind person never saw a plant before. So when I think of just explaining to someone who does not have the luxury to see nature, I would just try and to describe emotions. So when I step out into nature, 
and I breathe in the fresh air, I just feel calm and I feel relaxed. And it just, it's a, it's a very pure feeling because the air I'm breathing is pure. So I would explain to them the emotions that they feel say whenever they're very happy or they're excited or they're calm or they're at peace with themselves. So I would honestly take a step-by-step drawn out discussion of a great time in their life. And we would discuss that. So I would like to focus on a happy situation that they were very content in their life, have them discuss it to me and the tranquil, the tranquility that they would gather from discussing and reliving that moment. That is how I would explain nature to them in that light. So that's what, that is how I would do it. That's, it's a very difficult question. It's very, that would probably be a trial and error situation, but I'm very, I have a very intimate connection with nature. So that's how I would do it. And Oh, what is one feature you change about yourself and why? Um, one feature? Let's see. I do talk a lot. So <laughs> that is an issue that I have to work on. Um, I need to work on condensing my thoughts and not rambling. So that is probably something I would like to work on. And I am working on actively. Is there anything else? Oh, why is because sometimes I can lose people because I just keep going on and on. So I think that's, that's a good one. And then there is, Oh, Linnell, I'm sorry. I skipped. Um, OSIN acidification hashtag. So, I mean, there's a lot of CO2 in our environment and a lot of that carbon goes into our oceans as well, causing, um, well, um, acid buildup. So that is what I think of when I think of um, ocean acidification. And I also think of the microorganisms, excuse me, the microorganisms and the aquatic species and aquatic ecosystems that are being disrupted due to this acidification from the CO2 emissions. That is what I think about the hashtag. Linnell was trying to help me with these hashtags because again, as I'm new, I have no idea what hashtags meant, but apparently it's just giving a 30 second or so rundown of what you think that means. I'm learning so much. It's so fun and so crazy. Oh, Sam gave me a top hat. Top hat. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> what would you say is the, Gemini asked, what would you say is the biggest problem facing our educational system today and why? Um, honestly, I think it is the quality of our education. It is the financial aspects related to education and it is what we are teaching our youth as well. I feel the environment should be addressed to our youth at a very young stage and it should be implemented into our course requirements. So that is a few brief issues that I believe that we are facing. See, that was condensed. That, that, was, that was short. I wasn't talking too much. That's what I have to do. So funny. Ave asked, um, oh, hashtag press freedom. So freedom of press. Um, honestly, I feel like that is also attributed to freedom of speech. So you have, you have the right to share your opinion. You have the right to engage in your community. You have the right to share information. You have the right to speak on a cause and share that cause to the best of your ability because you're raising awareness. So that is what I take from press freedom. I honestly, I've never really heard press freedom, press freedom before. I'm actually going to look that up, but that was my take on press freedom. Public speaking is superb. Thank you, Christian. I did take a public speaking course in college, so maybe that's coming into play. And my minor was communications, so thank you for that. So Mel asked, given that most of my elected leaders have dismissed climate change and global warming, how will I try to convince them 
that it's important to create changes for the betterment for future generations. So if you're just tuning in, I did kind of touch on that before. I would sit down with our officials and I would tell them that they need to look at the facts because our facts cannot be disputed. And if they understand as a leader, your job is to protect the health and the betterment of society. Whenever we take, whenever we speak in terms of the environment, the environment plays a major role in communal health. And not the world does not revolve around economy because the economy would not exist if humans didn't exist. And the only thing that is, that is keeping us alive is our environment. So whenever we're damaging our environment, we're damaging ourselves and our health and our well-being and our future generations. So I would sit down, I would speak with them the facts, which I've briefly ran over about um, we're one degree away from our tipping point and the catastrophic events following that one degree once we meet it. That is what I would share to them and discuss that. Because again, facts cannot be disproven. It is black and white. So I would be able to show them that. Who or what is the biggest enemy of the earth? I mean, it is humanity. <laughs> Let's be real. It's us. We're the ones that are destroying this planet. That is what I would say to, say to that. But as the biggest enemy, we can also be the greatest contributor as well. We just have to be mindful and aware of our actions. Oh, hi from, oh, you're from Thailand. I've always wanted to go to Thailand too. All of my friends have gone. I have not gone yet. I was very close to going last year. With that beautiful face, I'm sure you got a boyfriend. <laughs> Actually, I mean, I don't know if I can talk about this, but I do not. But <laughs> um, thank you for thinking so. <laughs> Hi, good morning. I'm so behind. I'm like reading comments that like, were posted 13 minutes ago. I like how you just go, go, go. I can listen to you all day. Thank you. Really, I don't know if I could listen to myself all day, so thank you. Oh, more Philippines, thank you. What do I think about Thailand as I'm seeing this now? Honestly, I'd love to go. The beaches are absolutely beautiful. The jungle, oh, I would love to go and just do some type of expedition in the jungle and just kind of really look into the rainforest and really immerse myself in it. And then, of course, go to the beach and just kind of relax. Ooh, Eddie, how would I describe climate change 10 years from now? Why ask me that? I have no idea. <laughs> I'm hoping I have an idea. I'm hoping that we're going to step up our game and turn things around because 10 years from now, the most crucial year to act right now is 2020 and 2021. So we have a lot to do in these two years. And 2020 is almost over. So our agenda is jam-packed. So what I'm hoping um, the climate will be from 10 years from now that we will actually have a great progression and the Paris Agreement will take effect where we are showing ambition and we are actually meeting our goals because I'm not sure if you're aware of this, the, pa the Paris Agreement is amazing and it's a great goal, um, it's a great standard to set ourselves with, but our emissions, we have not met, the countries have not met the goals that they have set for emissions emissions output. So we are lacking the ambition. So from 10 years from now, I'm hoping that we have already accomplished and we have already reached and settled with our ambition and that we just keep on going because right now we're kind of just complacent and we're not really taking as much action as we need. So in the future, I'm hoping that we've kind of can't come together and really put what's important in front of us. Linnell, another hashtag, polarized caps. So uh, the last iceberg, I don't know if you are aware of this, but the last ice cap in Canada has actually broken off. So we are, we are running out of ice caps, to put it <laughs> shortly. With global warming, the temperature increasing, we have such, we have diminished so many of our ice caps that the sea level has been rising exponentially and increasing drastically and rapidly throughout the years. So our polar ice caps are threatened and it is causing major rises in sea level, which brings on so many more issues in and of itself with the sea level rising. And yes, I'm trying so hard to answer in 30 seconds only. I really am.
John, how do I prepare for the competition? Since it is virtual, I'm really just focusing on speaking and interviewing and trying to get my thoughts in a cohesive <laughs> short sentence. So that is really how I'm prepping. And I'm also reading up on current events as well, but I usually do that in my free time anyways. So that is what I'm trying to do is just kind of stay alert and stay aware. And I have answered that question why I think I should be the next Miss Earth. So to condense it, I really feel like an American really should take on the title of Miss Earth because I know each country plays a vital role in when it comes to unity when combating the climate crisis. And as an American, I know that some of my country may have fallen short while reaching our goals as well. So America needs a strong leader and an influential speaker to be able to advise not just the world, but my own country, that we need to take these steps to combat climate change. And as an individual, I do consider myself a, a woman of the earth, a well-rounded and cultured individual where I have lived in multiple countries and I've seen multiple cultures and I've interacted. So I believe as a person, I, I know what it's like to live, as I mentioned, in Australia and in Africa and Europe. So I am a worldly individual and I know how to speak to different, different cultures and different people that represent different, uh, different countries as well. Yes, Mary, I hope so. Can you greet me? Happy birthday, of course, happy birthday. Oh my goodness, I hope you were having such a great day. Um, one of my friend's birthday was just happening as well. And I know during a quarantine, it's like, what can you do? But I'm hoping that you have such an amazing day and you're with friends and family and you're eating a ton of cake, so much cake and so much ice cream. I honestly hope you have the best birthday, honestly, ever. Like really try and take advantage of this. Really, oh, that's so amazing. I'm so happy that uh, you shared that with that, shared that with me. But yes, am I a Democrat or Republican? Hmm, I'd like for you guys to guess on that, but I will just kind of tell you, I am neither. I am not a Republican. I am not a Democrat. I am an independent. So <laughs> that is who I am. I do not, I do not like to go in either direction because my views are, pretty moderate and I like I don't like to be swayed by either position and I don't like to be labeled as just one person as one political affiliation so that is why I chose to be an independent because I am an independent woman just in and of myself so I whenever it comes to my political views and my political aspirations I also stand as an independent oh thank you Lorraine <laughs> It is very difficult. She says I was doing amazing, so thank you. It's difficult um, doing a Facebook Live as opposed to having inter an interviewer because you really don't know um, what you what people want to talk about, what you want to hear. So it is nice whenever you have an interactive audience such as this where you can actually engage with um, each other and actually have a conversation instead of just kind of like question, 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 and just me and the interviewer. I just have so many questions from everyone else across the world. So... I appreciate that. What is my Twitter handle? I don't really use Twitter. It is at Lindsay Marie Coffee. Oh, no, I think it's at Lindsay M Coffee. Um, I don't use Twitter much. I feel like I need to get back into that. It's been a while. Um, but yeah, I think it's Lindsay M Coffee. Um, Eddie, you're such an amazing speaker. And so, oh, thank you for being inspired. And pure heart, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. I appreciate that. Oh, we have another birthday. Mar Mariah, Mara, happy birthday to her. That is amazing. I hope she's having an amazing birthday too. Everyone is having so many birthdays. I love birthdays. So I hope I wish her a happy birthday. I hope she also has an amazing day, such an amazing year, whatever age she is going to be. Have her just pursue that year and 
put everything out there. Make this year matter, make this year count, give everything that you have. And again, make sure she eats a lot of cake and a lot of ice cream too. That's my favorite. So tell her happy birthday for me, please. Oh, Gemini, did I, did I forget to mention your name? I'm so sorry. Happy birthday. <laughs> I thought I did, I'm so sorry. But it is Gemini, Gemini's, Gemini's birthday and Mara's birthday. So happy birthday to both of those amazing women. I hope you also have like the best year as well. Make that, whatever age you are, make that count. I know I always set goals for myself with each birthday, like every year, um, any age that I'm turning, I try to try and set a goal that I'm going to achieve that is associated kind of with that age where I have like kind of a mile marker for what I want to accomplish by which age. So maybe even dabble with that, see how that goes. But regardless, set some goals. Set some goals that you want to achieve by the end of the year. What can you offer in the table this time, John? John asks, what can offer in the table this time? Do you mean when it pertains to the competition, what I can offer as an individual? What I can offer as a person is my my worldly background because I have gone to so many different places. I've met so many different people and I haven't just traveled to those places. I've lived there. I've lived in every single continent except Antarctica. So six out of seven continents I've lived on. I've lived in multiple countries. I've been able to interact with people that have different views, different lives than me. So I feel just being so worldly and cultured and really assimilated to all of my country, all the different countries as well, where I'm not just, I'm not an American. I'm not just one country. I honestly feel like I'm more than that. I feel like I'm, again, I'm more than my country. Am I more of a hiking or a beach person? Eddie, this is so funny because we were just talking about this today. I just went on a hike the other day. I am such an avid hiker. I, my interview, my intro video came out today. If you guys have been able to see it, but I briefly touch on my hiking experiences and I hike, I've hiked in so many different countries, every country I go to, I try and find a spot that I can kind of just run around in and explore. So I'm definitely a hiker. I do enjoy being on the beach for relaxation purposes and just to have fun, like toss a ball around. But I really am more of a hiker. I'm a very adventurous person. I actually, I was, if I can pull this up, I was showing my friends some of my hiking photos today. You might be able to see in the intro video. I don't know if you can see it, but there's like, ah, oh, that's like a huge like canon, canyon where one wrong step, you would be able to like fall and seriously injure yourself. So I consider myself really a professional hiker since I've hiked a lot of different, ter different terrain at different heights as well and different altitudes. So um, definitely a hiker. Again, went off on that. I need to condense. <laughs> Girl, you better stop falling in love with you the more you talk. Thank you. <laughs> Multi-knowledgeable you are. Thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, girl on fire hashtag. Thank you. <laughs> what is a message to my co-candidates and my fans? To my co-candidates, Honestly, just congratulations to everyone. You guys have worked so hard to get to this point and you deserve all of this. You deserve everything good that is coming to you. And just to please continue, whatever happens after this competition, please continue on with your title and with professing and trying to make a difference and influence each other. Because I'm hoping if you're like me, you got into this for a reason, not just because of a title, you got into this to actually make a difference and to change someone's life, to change the lives of hopefully millions. But even if you were able to change one life for the better and really share your knowledge, then you're right on track and you're doing, you're doing good. So I'm hoping that that would be the message that I would love to share with them. And I'm hoping for um, fans that are watching I would just want to say thank you so much for being so supportive and especially as I'm new to this, I had no idea what I was getting myself into and just hearing the flooding of positive comments honestly has encouraged me to keep on moving forward and to know that I'm actually on the right track and that I'm actually supposed to do this. 
So I want to just thank you all so much for being so kind and welcoming, especially because I'm not, I'm not familiar with this industry. So to be welcomed with open arms, honestly meant so much to me. So thank you. What is, um, do you know BTS? The band BTS? <laughs> they are such a, honestly, they're such a good band and they're so talented. They can dance like no other. They're so talented. So I do, I really do like BTS and they just prefer, performed for the first time ever at the VMAs over here in America. And I watched their performance. Amazing. They're so good. They're very, they're very talented young men. Oh, I got some more hashtags, woman of the earth. Honestly, if I'm going to explain a woman of the earth hashtag, I think I fit right into that because again, as I've said multiple times, I'm more than my country. I know what it means to step outside of my country and step out and to be really just a citizen of the world. I know what it's like to live in multiple areas, multiple countries when you're not, when you're outside of your comfort zone as well. So when you're a woman of the earth, you put yourself before your country, you put yourself before yourself, and you act with the environment in mind. And I will be taking off, oh, I, I've reached my hour. I haven't even um, looked at the time. I was too wrapped up. So I will be taking off in a couple of seconds. Um, I'll be answering some questions right before I leave. Um, I don't have too many left. Um, I've never been in the Philippines. But if, yeah, if you guys have mountains, I would definitely enjoy it. So if I am in the Philippines, I will be hiking, no doubt. And what are the first and last things you would do if you win Miss Earth? Well, I wouldn't like to think of the last things because I would always constantly just be trying to think of anything that I could do um, during my reign and after my reign. So I really don't have a uh, last thing in my mind. So what I would first and foremost do is just try and spread the word and get education out there. And I feel even being the first American in history to win the crown, that even might draw some publicity going around, which would be great because then I would be able to have a lot of people interested in and tune in where I would be able to speak my facts. I would be able to preach and profess my advocacy as well. So I would really try and draw as much traction and momentum to the Miss Earth organization as possible. Thank you so much. I appreciate all the support. And I will be, I guess I will be taking off. And I will also be doing another interview later tonight at... 2 p.m. Philippine time, um, 2 a.m. Um, uh, Eastern time. So if you guys would like to tune into that, I would appreciate it. It is um, uh, with uh, Litera, Litera, I'm so sorry, Litrado Philippines. And it was so nice. Thank you all for tuning in. I really appreciate it. So honestly, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. And thank you for being so interactive. I loved your questions. So I really hope to speak to you guys soon. And please, thank you for so much for supporting me. And please continue to do so because honestly, I need you guys. And I need you to really help me and kind of reassure me that I'm going on the right track because I'm brand new. So thank you so much for all of your support. And I wish you guys all the best of luck. And Mary, I hope you're doing well and stay safe and really just love each other and support one another and oh one i'm so sorry 1 a.m u.s time was my interview um all right so thank you guys so much i hope you have a great rest of your day and for anyone else tuning in my time i hope you have a great rest of your night so thank you all so much Mwah. hope you have a great time great rest of your day bye, -bye.